Statin-induced myopathy is the topic. And statin medications are widely used uh, to treat uh, cholesterol. They reduce cholesterol levels, and they also reduce LDL levels. And they work on endogenous cholesterol, cholesterol that's made by the body. Now, they're given a big fancy chemical name, HMG-CoA reductase inhibitors. And I'll talk a little bit more about that soon. Now, what are the side effects that we need to discuss in this video? And the side effect we are going to discuss is myopathy. Now, myopathy it can be thought of as any symptom uh, that involves myalgia, muscle pain, but it can be really any disease of the muscle. Now, uh, in addition, there's some very serious consequences that can occur, such as rhabdomyolysis. And rhabdomyolysis is referring to breakdown of the muscle. Now, fortunately, to track this, there's a lab value. And that lab value that we use to track this is called creatinine kinase. And creatinine kinase is very important, CK abbreviated. And in myopathy, creatinine kinase levels can be very high, as much as 10 times the upper limit of normal. And um, when that happens, um, this not only indicates myopathy, but also indicates that the medication needs to be discontinued. It's fairly common side effect. It can occur up to about 10% of patients that are on statins. So pretty significant. So now let's talk a little bit about the chemical pathway of cholesterol synthesis. And that will give you an idea of what uh, is going on. So you have HMG-CoA, and HMG-CoA is then acted upon by an enzyme known as HMG-CoA reductase. And that brings about mevalonate. And then further down the pathway you have these isoprenoids. And then finally you have cholesterol being made by the body. And then you have another byproduct known as coenzyme Q10. Now statins work right here. They block that enzyme. And because they block that enzyme, they're known as HMG-CoA reductase inhibitors. Now, when you block this rate-limiting step of cholesterol synthesis, essentially what you're doing is you're pre pre preventing anything from uh, occurring afterwards. So you don't get cholesterol, which is good. But in addition to not getting cholesterol, you also are depleting these two products. And it is believed that the depletion of isoprenoids and coenzyme Q10 contributes to muscle cell death. So that's why you're getting the myopathy. So what are the symptoms if someone does develop this side effect? Well, the symptoms essentially are muscle-related, muscle cramps, uh, muscle aches. That's how the patient would describe it. Sometimes, if it's serious enough, you can get brown urine. And what has, that is, is that essentially the myoglobin that is breaking down is essentially causing this discoloration of the urine. Now, what is the reason somebody would get uh, myopathy? You know, a lot of patients are placed on it, but only a small percentage of patients actually develop uh, myopathy. So what are the, some of the risk factors? Well, there's two categories of risk factors. There's patient-related risk factors, and there's drug-related. The drug-related one is really uh, easy to explain, high doses. High doses of statins are related. So the higher the dose, the more li likelihood of the possibility of developing myopathy as a side effect. But some of the patient-specific uh, risk factors are female patients are at higher risk, patients that are above the age of 50, advanced age, comorbid conditions such as diabetes or hypertension, and a patient with renal disease. And if the patient does have renal disease, you would probably see an elevated BUN creatinine somewhere in their uh, clinical vignette.
Now, how do you screen for this? What are the guidelines? Well, if a patient is at low risk of developing myopathy, then there's really no need to order any baseline tests because statins are so widely prescribed that it wouldn't be very cost effective. But if a patient is at high risk of developing myopathy, then they recommend ordering at least a baseline creatinine kinase level. And high risk patients include above 50 female patients, patients with diabetes or high blood pressure, or patients that have been placed on a high dose of a statin. Now, if a patient has been already placed on a statin and has developed muscle symptoms, then definitely you should order a uh, creatinine kinase level. And then finally, one important thing is that all patients should be counseled about the possibility of developing uh, statin-induced myopathy. And if they do develop any kind of muscle pain, that they should call and uh, report it so that it can be decided whether this medication should be continued or not. So what is the treatment or management if someone does indeed develop myopathy while placed on a statin? Well, if the myopathy is mild, then you can continue the medication. And the reason is because, fortunately, the symptoms resolve quickly. But if the, someone has severe myopathy, then definitely the medication needs to be stopped. And if someone has progressed to the point where there's muscle uh, breakdown, such as rhabdomyolysis, then you need to DC the medication and you need to also give IV fluids because that will help prevent renal damage, kidney damage. So that's very important. So let's uh, take a look at some clinical vignettes. A 52-year-old female with history of hypertension and hypercholesterolemia prevent, presents with mild edema, weakness, and body aches. Her only medication are atorvastatin and chlorothaladone. Previously normal serum creatinine level is now 2.6. Her BUN is 32, and her serum is clear without pigmentation. Urine dipstick is positive for blood, but a microscopic exam is negative for WBCs, RBCs, and CAS. Most likely diagnosis is... Well, this patient is on a statin, and she has risk factors. Well, first of all, she's female, she's above the age of 50, and she's got hypertension. So she's high risk, high risk of developing myopathy. And also, her BUN and creatinine levels are high. That means her, she's got some renal disease here. Now, don't confuse creatinine with creatinine kinase. Those are two different values. And then she even develops body aches. So she's most likely in a condition that has been induced by her statin, and that would be rhabdomyolysis. Next question. 47-year-old man comes to the office for periodic health maintenance exam. Lately, you have been following his cholesterol and has been elevated despite an attempt at low-fat diet and a new moderate exercise program. In discussing this issue with him, you decide that, considering all of his other risk factors for heart disease, it is time to start him on Lovastatin. You can explain the risks and benefits associated with this drug, and you give him the prescription before he leaves the office with instructions to call your office immediately if he experiences any common side effects. Three weeks later, you receive a frantic message from your answering service that this patient has called to tell you that he has side effects from the medication. The complaint that you expect to hear about when you return his call is. So this is just a straightforward question asking you what are some of the side effects of statin. And the most common one for him most likely is muscle aches. Some, some sort of myopathy. And then finally, 54-year-old woman comes to the office for a follow-up exam after recently starting a high dose of lovastatin for elevated cholesterol. 
She has been a patient of yours for years, and you have treated her for hypertension, episode of gout, and anemia caused by ure uterine leiomyomas that were treated with hysterectomy five years ago. She has no complaints at this time as in a, and is in a rush to pick up her children from a soccer game. Blood pressure is 130 over 80 and her pulse is 65. Physical exam is unremarkable. Most appropriate course of action is to order cholesterol levels and two. Okay, well, let her go pick up her children. Well, I would disagree. There's got to be something else done. Obtain uric acid levels. No, that's not. It doesn't have anything to do with what we're talking about. So we're left with C or D. Should we order a baseline CK level? Or should we just say... Oh, go home and call if you have any side effects. Well, the answer to that question, whether it's C or D, has to do with is she a low-risk patient or is she a high-risk patient? And risk for what? Risk of developing myopathy. Well, let's take a look. She's 54, so she's greater than 50. She's female. She's got cholesterol. Uh, but she's been started on a high dose of a statin, and, and she has hypertension. So she's definitely a high-risk patient uh, with regard to the possibility of developing myopathy. So she should have at least a baseline creatinine kinase level. So the answer is C.